Jonathan and his colleagues wanted to see if they could observe the lizard's traits evolve by conducting another kind of experiment. Their inspiration was the rapidly changing environment of some of the smallest Caribbean islands. Hurricanes occasionally swamped these tiny islands, scrubbing them free of lizards. The team realized they could use the depleted islands as laboratories. They began their experiment by capturing tree-dwelling anoles on a larger island. Oh, well, there's one up there. Yeah. Good. Then they visited seven islands that a hurricane had cleared of lizards. On each, they placed a female and male anole. These islands have no trees, only small bushes. In the sun or in the shade. Uh, How would the long-legged lizards fare on thin branches? The next year, the scientists returned. She will be back. She will be they found back. that the mating pairs they had introduced not only survived, but reproduced. And the new population had grown and taken to living on thin branches. And now she's in my noose. Good. The scientists collected the lizards. So the height off the Every time we found a lizard, we measured how high it was off the ground, 40 centimeters. the diameter of the surface, okay. and whether it was perched head up, head down, or horizontal. They brought them back to their field lab, took x-rays to precisely measure the length of their legs, and scanned their toe pads. Then they returned each lizard to the exact spot where they had found it. OK, all right. Well. Now they had baseline data on the new populations. A year later, they came back. All right, I think he gave us a slip. OK, uh, excellent. And discovered that the well average done. lizard leg had shortened in just two generations. Well, we thought maybe this is just a fluke, a statistical accident. In fact, over four years, the populations all got shorter and shorter and shorter legs. Evolution can occur very rapidly when natural selection is strong. Adaptations like these explain how different body types evolve, but they do not explain how new anole species arise. It's changes in other traits that play a key role in speciation. Two groups of animals are defined as different species when individuals from one group don't mate and reproduce with those from the other. So for a population to become a new species, something has to prevent its members from breeding with members of closely related populations. This is called reproductive isolation. One way a species can split into two is for populations to separate geographically. Over many generations, they can undergo enough changes in their respective habitats that if and when they come back together again, they don't mate. So what kind of changes keep anoles from mating? Anoles have a flap of skin under their throats called a dewlap, which males display to attract females. And remarkably, every species in the same area has a different dewlap. So a change in a dewlap is a critical step in the formation of new anole species. Jonathan, why would these dewlap colors change? Consider this grass lizard that lives here in the forest where it's relatively dark. And if we look at its dewlap, you can see it's pretty light colored. Now suppose that a population of these lizards ended up in an area that was much more open and sunnier. In that case, a light colored dewlap isn't very effective. So over time, the population would evolve by natural selection to have darker dewlaps. 
and we might end up with this one. And he's got a much darker dewlap, much more visible in a light open habitat. If for some reason these two populations come together, the females would no longer recognize the males as members of the same species. They wouldn't mate. They would be reproductively isolated. There's a simple connection between changes within populations, or microevolution, and the formation of new species, or macroevolution. When changes within populations include traits involved in mating, like dewlap color, then the stage is set for the formation of new species. Once new species have formed, competition drives the evolution of different body types. Species living in the same area compete for resources. But if members of one species move into another habitat, they can use resources not available to the other species. Over many generations, natural selection favors traits that enable species to occupy different habitats. This process has led to the body types we see in Puerto Rico. And not just there. On each of the Caribbean's four largest islands, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Cuba, and Hispaniola, we find the same distribution of similar-looking lizards.